Proxies for mobile, proxy uh, browser for Android, proxy droid, and NetShade. There's many more. Free proxy servers. So you could just Google it and you'll get some answers. So one of them used to be hidemyass.com that everybody used. Now they started charging. You get one free request. So you would go to hidemyass.com. So say um, your company blocked netflix.com and you were just trying to order a movie um, to go when we had the old CD, the DVD kind that would come to your house. Some people still use that. Most people don't. They just stream everything. But say you're trying to get some DVDs, uh, but your company is still blocking it. Well, you used to be able to go to hidemyass.com and then go type in, I want to go to netflix.com and it would load it for you through the browser. So you could still get to it. And because it was encrypted, they couldn't read what you were actually going to and they would allow the connection through the, through the company's gateway proxy. Where if you tried to go to Netflix directly, they would block that, right? They would see that request and they would block it. Um, but now, hidemyass.com, you can't do that. You have to pay for it. So, but also, hidemyass.com has become very popular and so have a lot of other proxies. So people know about the most common ones and they will tell you, hey, don't use that. So if you try to go to hidemyass.com, they won't even allow that. But there's a bunch of proxies you can set up. You can even use your own home networks all kinds of stuff to kind of circumvent things. So you can kind of test companies and see what they allow and what they don't allow. If they're allowing people to go to hidemyass.com, that's a problem. If they're allowing people to go to pastebin.com, that's a problem. Those are fines, right? You want to say, hey, you can't be allowing this stuff because if they pay stuff into pastebin, then it bypasses all of your security. That's an HTTPS connection. Unless you're monitoring um, SSL and DPI, doing DPI, deep packet inspection, I can exfiltrate an entire database and you won't have any clue. And I can store it in Pastebin and then go pick it up when I get home. And in Pastebin, I can actually encrypt the paste so that even if you're trolling the Pastebin, you still won't see it. So anonymizers, we talked about this a little bit with proxies. Proxies and anonymizers go hand in hand. They're pretty much the same thing. Most anonymizers are using some type of a proxy. So it removes all identifying information from the user's computer while the user surfs the internet. Anonymizers take activity, um, uh, make activity on the internet untraceable. I mean, yes and no, there's always a trace, um, but if you're trying to do something really nefarious, like hitting the underground, you want to put seven hops between you and the underground, preferably through different countries, as each, one, each country a hop. So then uh, you're seven hops away from the danger. They don't contact you directly unless they're able to infect your machine while you're playing around. So anonymizers allow you to bypass internet sensors. So I love how they spelled sensor here. So um, sensors are going to kind of detect activity and you can hide from that activity so that you're not being watched. So pro uh, why use anonymizers and proxies and VPN uh, connections? So that you can have privacy and anonymity. You can um, protect people from online attacks. It does protect you from an online attack because people can't attack your IP address directly. They can attack your connection. You just kill it and then relaunch another one in your back if they attacked your connection. But if they attack your home IP, you can never get out again. So access restricted content. So you can get on uh, restricted content. You can bypass intrusion detection systems and firewall rules if they're not monitoring deep packet inspection on SSL or TLS, right? So if they're not cracking that stuff open, then they can't see it. And that's true because if we encrypt our connection, then they can't read that stuff. And in fact, if you're using a VPN, they can't decrypt that, right? So there's very few VPNs that they can actually decrypt. So what else can we say about this? Um, restricted content. So if you want to download movies, you can do it through um, like a private internet access. Just make sure that if your VPN connection dies, your connection dies. There's a little checkbox in the client. So if you want to download music or pirated stuff, you know, whatever to play with, look for hunt for malware, people need to do this, right? We need to scan this information. We need to download it. We need to dig into it. So one of the ways we do that is we use um, anonymizers and basically VPNs so that we encrypt our stuff right out to the internet. And our ISP, the Comcast watching and says, well, I don't see anything nefarious there. They're good to go. So they can't see that we're downloading movies so they don't send us nasty letters and try to break our internet connection. Um, see, these things are also a problem for companies because you can't peer into them when they're created. So if you have these tunnels on your network, you should be investigating those users in other ways. So censorship circumvention tools, Tails. So a tool is called Tails. 
It's a live operating system that um, a user can start on any computer from a DVD, USB stick, or SD card. So it's basically a, an OS on a disk. You just jack it in the machine and reboot it. It'll reboot off the stick, and then you have an operating system that you can completely trash. So it aims at prever uh, preserving privacy and anonymity and helps to uh, use the internet anonymously and circumvent censorship. It leaves no trace on the computer unless you're using the hard disk, then it will leave a trace. And it uses state-of-the-art cryptographic tools to encrypt files, emails, and instant messaging. G-Zapper. So Google sets a cookie on uh, a user system with a unique identifier that enables them to track the user's web activities, such as keywords, habits, search results, websites visited. I mean, they own you. They completely own you, right? So information from Google cookies can be used as evidence in a court of law. Yes, it can be. So you need to make sure that you know how to clean up behind yourself depending on what you're doing. So anonymizers, uh, let's see if there's any good ones here. Anonymous web, uh, web surfing tool, I think you'll see a test question on that. Siphon and Proxify. So this top three on the left, you'll see a test question about. Thank you.